very, very thankful. We were also quite thankful after speaking to the City Press journalist that we weren't in the vehicle with you and Bart at some while. <laughs> Bart happens to be an ex-racing driver and his journalists <laughs> seem to be quite relieved when Dr. Suleiman said, I'll take over the driving, Bart can rest. And they were, that's when things got quite tense with him. <laughs> he said he needs to get work done and there's no time and he's, his, his destiny is not in his hands. He needs to get where he needs to get. Well, these guys were quite glad when the vehicle stopped. <laughs> so we've come a long way since the 2017 fires. And when one looks out here, you'll see a little plastic feeder. And the reason we put that out was sugar syrup, because the sugar that helped the beekeepers came via gift of the givers. And that's what's given us the kind of recovery that we've had besides the rain uh, that we had since 2017. The center of education and information was always a dream. Um, and uh, it's become a reality. Uh, I'm glad to tell you, Doc, that in the last 10 days we've had no less than 70 school children between the ages of 14 and 18 here for an information and education on the bees and these young people who are part of the green pop festival have now planted in excess of 5,000 indigenous trees in Nisner. so like the bee and the flower have a symbiotic relationship it's amazing for us that in the same way, uh, us as Hope for the Honeybee have been able to have it with these kids. Because they are the future. And they see the reality. When, we, when they get here, we tell them, you know, what you're doing is not just helping bees. It's helping all insect life. And it's helping to make the earth a better place for your futures. So we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for our, your ongoing trust and belief in us, in Grant, Megan, Zach and I. And um, what I'd like you to do on our last course, Zach attended, and I'd like you to present that to Zach. Sure. Zach is not quite a word on that. Um, everybody have a good look at this. Block 9 will give you the entire journey of what happened. Um, and we need to, to be quite amazed that this whole help that came to the bees and the beekeepers is a world first. But not only that, in February and March this year, we were able to take it further and help the beekeepers down on the Western Cape, the West Coast, who have lost a serious amount of beehives due to their drive. And I think in your mind, um, and our hope, it, this was never going to be a first. It was going to be the start. And that's, and I thank you for that, Doc. I just like to tell, good morning, everybody. I like to tell you how the story started. We came, the fire started on June 7th, the 7th. That was a Tuesday. By Thursday evening, I arrived in, in, in Nysna and met my team in the checkers shop right where else. And once I was there, Grant walked in. And he said, I need some sugar. So as I start, did we run out of sugar? Why did he not get a sugar in his food parcel? So I started, yes, we need our sugar. And it's going to come soon. I said, go down to shop right and get it. So Grant looks at me a little bewildered. He said, but it's not for me. So I said, who's the sugar for? He said, for the bees. Mm -hmm. I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> what is this guy talking about? Which bees eat sugar? So I said, okay, I don't understand this game of sugar. So then I said, how much do you need? He said, quite a bit. I made a call to Mesma. They sent us 30 tons of sugar the next day. <laughs> so in any case, I went home to, well, to the hotel that evening. I'm saying the story is not complete. There's something about the story I need to know more. So I sent Grant a message. I said, bring me some people tomorrow who can talk to me about bees, because I really don't know what this is all about. Then Megan, Owen, and Grant came the next day. And I got a whole education on bees. 
spoke about the cave honeybee, how they were employed and deployed, how they can make their own queen bee, how they can survive in these kind of conditions, how the American bees die a year, the bees protect themselves, and the 300 hives or 350 hives were gone, and each hive was about 70,000 bees, so you look at 22 million bees gone. And I was fascinated by the story. So I asked him, what do you need? He said, look, we need sugar, but it's not ideal, because it's not original. The pollen we can't get because there's a drought here, so the trees did not grow and the fire came and took everything away. So that's the problem. And then he said there's pollen substitute or nectar substitute, but it's very expensive. And then you have to get the hives, and you know we need more to grow trees and all that, a lot of different things. So I, and he said that we got a place. So, so I said, okay, can I come and see? Then he brought me here. Then they take out the bee soup. I said, what is the soup? He <laughs> 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 said, you're going to get this thing. I said, yeah, I want to be with the bees. No, I'm scared of bees. <laughs> then eventually I said, no, there's only one way to them. Get into the damn soup. <laughs> <laughs> we go outside, he opens a box, and they both shout. They said, there's a queen bee, there's a queen bee. You don't see it often. And they said, this is a spiritual sign. It's a sign of good things to come. Oh. I saw the beauty of the bees. You see it on the pictures. You see it on TV. But I saw it live. The comb and how it all looks, and how the bees sit, and the wings, and every aspect of it. I fell in love with bees that instant. <laughs> yeah. So then we came out, and I looked at the stuff, I said, what drove me was not so much the bees. What drove me was the passion of, of these guys about the bees. I said, if people are so passionate about this creature, they will go all out to make sure it's a success. If people can love it, an insect that much, you know. So it was not so much the bees that got to me. It was their passion about the bees that got to me. And I said, this thing needs help. We've never done this thing before. Let's have a look. And then I said, and they were very modest. They were asked. They said, look, we need some sugar, we need some pollen, we need some hives. Hives may cost three or four thousand rand. Pollen is expensive. I think 10 or 27 rand or something for some size. And you get it from PE and you get it from some other place. And it's cheaper in Joburg kind of stuff. And you get it a bulk order. It helps. So they were lucky at 10 or 20,000. I said, I'll start you off with 450,000. <laughs> yeah. And then they just looked at it. And I could see that. Tears in their eyes because they never expected that. And I was just so happy. And as the months went past, I realized I made no mistake. You know what? But these are the people to support. And then they started telling them of academics who were coming here, and the plant specialists who were coming here, and other people who were coming here. And I said, This is brilliant in bee education. They wanted to create a conservation pathway on the whole this Raza Road, Trench Field, still a world first conservation area for bees, and, you know, and a research center where we can all learn about the bee. And I was so impressed with that. I said, no, we will support this thing further. And as it went, you know, they said the squad will keep coming. And then I was going to an SCBC program, newsroom. It's five to nine, I'm going live at nine o'clock. In the studio, I get a call to my number. And the guy says, are you the guy with the bee? I said, yes, <laughs> not me, but I'm telling the other guy to know what the bee I don't know anything about the bees. <laughs> he said, I've got a farm, I think it's a thousand hectares up the road from here, isn't it? I've got a thousand hectares to take the farm. You know, use it whilst I'm not here, put your bees there, I don't get affected by the fire. Mm -hmm. And like that, people started calling. I got so many hectares, I got this land, and then I told them, you guys know the area, go check the farms out, these people have given us their farm. So generosity started coming from among the people. Mm -hmm. Then somebody said, yes, a couple of hives here, and then uh, PMB suddenly sponsored a hundred hives, and the other hundred we bought, mm -hmm. and then somebody said, come, there's four hives here, and there's one hive here, and there's three hives here, mm -hmm. come and fetch the hives. And then people said, now, how do we resuscitate the bees? We need to have some bees are stuck. And the best part was when I walked out with him, he showed me the bee, he said, look at this one. This one is hungry. Yes. I said, how do you know the difference between a hungry bee and a normal bee? <laughs> <laughs> he said, look, it's hungry. And it, actually, the bee had no energy the way it was spinning when I thought of it afterwards. So I said, these guys really know a lot of things about bees. <laughs> and you know, and it grabbed your own and negative knowledge and your passion for the bees that actually made me do a split second decision mm -hmm. to support you. Like I tell you, Chris, oh, with no doubt, I have made a mistake. You know, I came back second time, I saw you made the honey, and how pure the honey is, and I'm so happy. You've been waiting for a long time for me to come here. The excuse was I had to come to open classes for the minister this morning. I said, you know what, let me use this opportunity now to open this thing. And we're going to take this thing even further. And thank you everybody for coming here and supporting them and giving them the encouragement. And the bee people who are coming here, this is a great thing. And I think the, all the schools and all the people should know how to preserve the bee and, and our environment and everything else in this country. Thank you very much. So from here, so early in the week, um, <coughs> we have one or two projects to look at in the Trans Sky. Um, and an amazing community that are self-sustainable, they've proved themselves. 
And uh, when I spoke to Doc, I said, we've got a couple of things we kind of need to speak about. And he was actually phoning to say the same thing. I said, they're kind of worrying about things like that because they need to get the funding. You know, there's costs involved and we're a really marginal little business. And he said, you guys are going to go and do it. Don't worry about that side. Go and make it happen. So I want to thank you because that means we are taking it further. Doctor, also, at some stage in uh, last year, the huge fires in Spain, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Suleiman sent me an email, Owen, deal with this woman and see how you can help her. <laughs> I'm like, Ron, we might be flying to Spain in my look at it. We're not quite sure. And I've got to be thankful to, while I'm here, to Megan for supporting all the way she has from 2005. This is... A reflection of Megan's work. All these photographs are Megan's photographs, and all the effort to get us to this point must always be acknowledged, and, and, and thanks must be given. Um, and then just everybody in NISA that's encouraged. But I want to thank Dr. Mike also of the Agri Agricultural Research Council in Stellenbosch, Dr. Giovanni Formato in Italy at the Institute of Zoology, and Professor Jamie Ellis at University of uh, Florida, State University, because Doc, when we, when we decided on the plan and going forward, this was completely unknown territory. And all I could think of was that time, we need to get bee scientists in, we need to get as much data from beekeepers, and then we need to put this out to our bee scientists and get their opinions. And then what we did, and they helped tremendously, it was not our um, kind of thumb suck, we got all of that just in case you're under any illusion because we are perpetual students um, and that's how it came and then also Professor Robin Crew gave a lot of input and our estimate on the losses were actually a little bit below Robin's he, and he was the one who officially said at least 22 million bees have died what I do need to tell you that on average we can see through various areas that there's already about a 20 to 30 percent comeback and that's amazing. You know, some areas like where's Krista? <laughs> down at Brenton. Some areas like Elan's Kram. People are seeing a lot more uh, bee activity. Kokama Cape Nature have asked me twice now in the last two months to relocate colonies that were in unsuitable areas. Those areas were a, a moonscape, an absolute moonscape this this time. So we mustn't underestimate Mother Nature's. Uh, ability to recover as well. But the symbiotic relationship again between the flower and the bee trying to get, well, Rog loves this and Glynis is a fundi on this from bee plants and seeing how the bees touch the flower petals to try and encourage that opening. Charles, you know about that with your blueberries, even though they haven't popped, the bees are already saying, come on little flower. And the symbiotic relationship is amazing, as is the life cycle of the bee. Inside the hive is that we as humanity can learn so much, because not a single bee does anything for itself. It, it does for the greater good. And it's exactly what Gift of the Givers does. Best amongst people are those who benefit mankind. The doctor said to us once before, it's not by us, but it's through us. And yeah. that's exactly how the bees work. It's not by each individual bee, it's through them for the collective good. So I want to thank everybody for coming along. I'm so hoping that Dr. Suleiman is very keen to go and see how his girls are doing. <laughs> if, no, anybody, does anybody know the story of Dr. Suleiman's colony? His own colony? No, no, I'm like a drone in a bee. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Just at that time as this was happening and the interaction with Doc and God and Gift of the Givers and, and, um, and, I can't, and then we'll come back. We were asked to come and collect a little handful of bees in a lay-by in Sedgeville and that area had burnt. And I got there and there was this orange rod, not even a handful of bees. Okay. And we brought them back and I took a comb from one or two of the other colonies. They were all struggling. And we put that into a box. And when Doc came here, that handful of bees is what you saw. Well, I can tell you right now that that colony is right there. It's called Gift of the Givers 1. If you look at it, you'll see it's got a super on. And that colony in 
13 months has gone from what I would estimate possibly just on five, between 500 and 1,000 bees. And that colony is at least 50,000 bees strong, now, if not closer to 60,000. And again, that's the symbiotic or the, 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 the parallel between how humanity can work to help each other in terms of how the bees help flowers and flowers help bees is a, just a beautiful life lesson for all of us and a conscious thing. So I want to thank you, but anybody wants to uh, suit up in a bee suit, you'll be welcome to join us. We've got a few lying around. As for the rest, I want to say thank you to everybody for coming along. You'll see along here, there's Colin who donated you. Everybody, this is a whole flow chart of everything that happened to you. So, I thank you for joining us here today. We are honored and privileged to have you with us. Don't be abusive. Don't be a person. Don't be a person. Don't be a person. Don't be a person.